So in facilitation, it's so critical for the teachers to actually try to implement the one strategy or whatever it is you think they're going to be able to do in the classroom. They have to practice doing it. Well, you know, before we go, and um, I would normally want to do this a little bit longer, but we got a little bit of a late start. I'd just like you folks to have a chance to try doing it, teaching it, implementing it, make a shape. I have a little paper on it. And actually, you already have this because you, you took my class, so it was in that packet. You already have it. But um, how do you do it? How do you get the kids to do it? So um, the first thing that I actually did not emphasize with you all, but I want you to know, is personal space. So I always teach that to them first, is that you cannot work well if you're next to furniture. It, you, you need to find a spot in the room where you can work. If you're too close to someone else, You'll be in their personal space, you'll be in theirs. So the first thing you really want to think about is, we're, we're going to make shapes. Find your personal space. They have to know how to be able to do that. They have to have enough space to move. And then, you notice how I clapped a lot? Mm -hmm. I do have implements and the turtle and I have these little things. When I first started teaching, I had boxes and big conga drums and a big boom box. And, you know, and now I just have a few little things that I bring around. But I often just use my hands. But you see how I clap and I give them counts. I give them, I say, now you're gonna make the shape for Hanai to give with love. You, and then I review all of that. Let me see a twisted one. If they all make this, then I'm gonna say, who? Let's twist it. And sometimes if they just go like this, I'll say, turn it inside out and upside down, twist it. Because that makes them think, well, what would that be like? And it, the shape comes out more creative. So let's just take that one word, Hanai, okay? And I'm going to have you, Joy, teach that to um, Janet a few times. Ask her, you're going to go over there and you're going to say, all right, my wonderful Janet third grader, I'm going to ask you to make a sh creative shape that shows me Hanai. I'd like, remember, you do it twisted, do it bent, do it in different levels. Let me see more elbows. And did you notice, after you made your shapes, I often commented on them. Yeah. I see a level bent. Mm -hmm. I see an arm. I'm reinforcing this vocabulary mm -hmm and reinforcing what you, with what you did without saying, good shape. I yeah. said what I see. I didn't tell your name and I didn't say whether it was good or bad. I just said what I see. Yeah. And so that I reinforces see. this. Yeah. yeah. So you teach Janet for a minute and you, Christina, teach Brenda for a minute. The word is going to be Hanai, to give with love. That was an important concept, right? So, or in fact, you know what, let's take the easier one is, it's funny to me, but it is much easier for me to dance about hard things, struggles, slavery, you know, um, the American Indians. Somehow, suffering and hard things are easier. So let's talk about his struggles, his imprisonment, the way his heart felt, his suffering that led him to know he had to do something, okay? His motivation. Okay, and we're talking as if they're our class. So yeah, Brenda gonna be your third grade student, okay. and Janet could be yours, and you go over there, and you can watch Melly how they do it. Okay, ready? Come. Oops! What did I, I thought I stepped on the dog. I was like, no, it was just my turtle. All right, ready? Give it a few tries. Come over. You speak to her, and you teach them. The word is suffering, imprisonment, despair. Tell them. So in this case, I narrowed it down to one strategy: make a shape. So I want them now to practice with each other, and. I usually try to have them practice doing exactly what I did. Rather than try to think of something new or what they're going to do, practice exactly what I did. The vocabulary that I did, practice implementing that. Because they've just seen me do it. They've just experienced me do it. So they'll have the most success if they do something that they're most familiar with. So I have them implement it with each other. I give them feedback. I have them give each other feedback so that they can really see because this is new to them. And for you teaching artists who have been in your art form for so long, you really have to remember that they are brand new to this. I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna give you interrupt one second. You didn't, you didn't know, okay. you're doing a beautiful <laughs> job. It's a lovely job. What I would suggest is this. While she's frozen is a good time to talk. Oh, so imagine you had 10 kids. Here. Keep her there and then. Well, yeah, yeah, just get her to there and four and then go, I see this and I see that and I see this. 
Make a new shape, another level. You don't even have to bring her back to neutral every time if you don't want to. You can move her a few yes. more times. Okay. okay. Okay? Give it one more try. Right. Go. Okay. This one I want to yeah. do. Now, Brenda, you try it with Christina. And I could see everything you remembered so good. Yeah, yeah, we did it a lot. I give, her, give it a try, babe. All right. So they do not have years of experience to fall back on. They have seen it. They've experienced it once or twice. Now they're going to actually try to do it. It's really hard to make that leap from not knowing anything about it and experiencing it lightly to actually getting someone else to do it. So to me, you have to understand that, be very patient with them, and work with them to help them get the basics of just doing something simple. Back to neutral, that's what I'm talking about. There that's you go. What I'm about. Yeah. More yeah. To the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, very good. Give it a try, Jenna. Do it to him um, just do one time. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were just teaching it over Kalaikini. So you really have to break it down and make it very simple for them. Give them the basic instructions. Make sure they understand the step by step of how to do it. And then let them do it several times. Then give them feedback, then let them do it again. In this particular workshop that you would see, because everyone arrived late, I didn't have enough time to do it as thoroughly as I would have liked. But to me, it is critical. And I thank Dan for helping me understand that. It's critical for them to practice it. And practice it a lot and watch each other practice it and give each other feedback and for you to guide them in it. Because they're going to try to do this and they've never done it before and it involves a field that they're not familiar with. So, yes, giving facilitation instructions, feedback and practice time to me is critical. Okay, wait, wait, wait. That was her fault. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. And excuse me, the chair is a whole other thing, and there, it's a whole other class. But it's definitely a fabulous prop. But you have to be, it takes a lot. You can't just, that, that the classroom management thing and the scaffolding about the chair would be big. You, you can, I love chair, and I do a whole lot of things about chair, but it takes scaffolding. You cannot just say, now everybody go make a shape on the chair. It would be chaotic and not safe. But you could use it, but you would have to scaffold a lot to get to that place. So um, let's wrap it up with that.